you doing? Welcome to another math lesson with Mr. Wilfred. For today, we're going to talk about subtracting integers with the same sign, uh, and we're going to dive in right now. Please, if you have the worksheet in front of you, look along with me. If you need to print it out, once again, you can access it on Google Classroom. All right. So as we look on right now, the first thing we always tend to do is we first start off by answering the bell word question. The bell word question here says, you know that the sum negative five and another number is a positive integer. What can you conclude about the sign of the other integer? What can you conclude about the value of the other integer? Explain. Once again, you know the sum, negative five and another number is a positive integer. What can you conclude about the sign of the other integer? What can you conclude about the value of the other integer? Explain. Now, what's typical, what we tend to do on bell work, and I give you time to begin to work on it and figure it out. But for today, what we're gonna do is instead, I'm going to uh, give you my understanding of the answers, just so that way, if you did pause the video, you did try to look at it, let me show you what I think you should have ended up getting. Now, you need to make sure you understand it's saying negative five plus a number. We don't know this number. It has to equal a positive though. So it's saying when you add another number to negative five, the result will be a positive number. And it's saying, what can you conclude about that? Well, what I can tell you regarding this question mark is I can say the question mark must be a positive number. It must be a positive number. Not only should it be a positive number, but it should be a number greater than, and it should be, I'm going to write, and it should be greater than greater than, right, five should be greater than five. Now, why greater than five? Because if I add five to this negative five, it gives me zero. It doesn't give me this positive number that we want, but if I add six, it gives me a positive one. If I add seven, it gives me a positive two. So when I'm looking at this bell work, I'm analyzing saying, okay, this number that's question mark must be positive and it has to be greater than five. Okay, because that's the only way to get a positive answer. Now for today, we're gonna look at some tracking integers with the same sign. We're gonna to continue to talk about the additive inverse. We have looked at already a couple different techniques to add and subtract integers between using counters and using absolute value and even looking at word problems with number lines, right? Um, but for now, I wanna make sure you guys understand that additive inverse means opposite. We're gonna add and do the opposite. So I wanna subtract this, rewriting subtraction problems as addition problems. Not that you can't do subtraction. I know you can do 10 minus three and tell me it's seven, but I believe when it comes to negative numbers, it's probably better for you to practice adding than it is to subtract. But nonetheless, let's practice rewriting these expressions as addition instead of subtraction. So let me give you a few minutes to practice. See if you can solve one through six. This is another time for you to pause the video and give, your give yourself a chance to solve this portion of the actual worksheet. All right, now I hope you had a chance to pause it. I hope you had a chance to rewrite these problems. I'm gonna show you exactly what you should have got if you paused it and you tried to create these problems as addition instead of subtraction, okay? Sorry, it's a little thirsty. No. Negative five minus a negative six. Now, because I see there's two negatives here. I should know that the two negatives next to each other is gonna give me a positive. But in case that you don't know that, I want you to remember this, KCC. Keep, change, change. What does this mean? Whenever we look at a subtraction problem, whenever we look at a subtraction problem and we're trying to figure out, okay, how do I rewrite that into addition? We wanna ask ourselves, I can, uh, since, since it's subtraction, let's keep the first term. The first term here is negative five. Let's keep it negative five. We wanna change the symbol in the middle 
So instead of it being minus, let's change that to a plus. And we want to change the last number. Instead of it being negative 6, we're going to change that to a positive 6. Now, we can keep doing that with every single one. Let's do it with this one here. Keep changing. Change. Keep the first number, 4. Change that sign to a plus, And change this 4 from a positive 4 to look like a negative 4. Let's keep going. Keep. Change. Change. Notice I change the negative to a positive. Change that negative 4 to a positive 4. And I would keep going here. Keep, change, change. Keep the first 9. Change it to addition. Change the second 9 to a negative 9. Keep the first number negative 6. Change that minus sign to a plus sign. And change this minus 7 to a positive 7. So this is what we end up getting when we do keep change change here or, or we change the subtraction to addition. Now, why do we do that? Because when we change it like this, now we can notice there's same signs and different signs. So for example, right? If I'm just gonna highlight all the ones that are the same signs. So are there any here that are the same signs? No, there are none here that are the same signs. Negative five plus six, Negatives, negative and a positive, different signs. Number two, positive four, negative four, different signs. Negative nine, positive four, different signs. All of these are different signs. Why do we notice that? Because if we're using the absolute value method, it, it demands that we do different things for each one. So if I keep scrolling on down, let's go over the notes and the rules for adding integers with the same or different signs. Now, these are adding integers with the same or different signs. But Ms. Wilford, I thought we was working on subtracting integers today. We are. But notice, just like we did in the independent practice, our goal is to rewrite subtraction into addition. So that way we can use the addition rules to be able to help us solve the problem. So if they are the same signs, we're going to take the absolute value of both integers. Now, believe it or not, taking the absolute value of both integers is actually the first step for both situations, whether it's same sign or different sign. We need to take the absolute value. Now, the ones that are above, remember, those are all different signs. But nonetheless, we will take the absolute value. The second step for adding with the same sign would be to, I'm, I'm sorry, Yep, adding with the same sign. That makes sense, right? We're adding and they have the same sign. It would mean that we would need to take the absolute value first and then add the absolute value numbers. So this is a refresher of what we've done. They have the same sign. Imagine if it said negative 4 plus negative 4. Absolute value first. Then it's 4 and 4. Add them both together. 4 plus 4. And then you're going to use the sign... that they both share. So if it was negative four, for example, something that looks like this, negative four plus negative four, it would become absolute value of negative four plus absolute value of negative four. That's absolute value, which is really four plus four. That would give you eight. And then you would need to use the sign that they both have, which in this case would be negative, okay? Now, for if it was different signs, different signs, instead of adding, you would subtract, and you would subtract the lesser from the greater. You would subtract the lesser from the greater, which is really saying greater minus lesser. Right, that's another way of this is what this is saying. Take the bigger number minus the smaller number. Now, after you do the bigger number minus the small number, yes, you still need to use the, uh, the sign. Now, using the sign, because they, because they were different signs, keep in mind one's positive, one's negative. Well, what sign do we use for the answer? Use the sign of the bigger or greater absolute value number. Bigger or greater absolute value number. So, for example, imagine we had negative 10 plus 4. 
These are different signs. But when I go to do the absolute value of both, I get 10 and I get four. I'm gonna subtract them because I know the second step says to subtract lesser from the bigger. I get six, but then I have to ask myself, is this a positive six or is it a negative six? Remember that the 10 is the bigger number, its original sign was negative. So that means the answer has to be negative as well. Okay, now these are just examples to help us see that. Now, when I go down to the modeling, I'm gonna show you how to actually use the counter slash the absolute value method to be able to solve this. And then after that, you can take on and finish the rest of the independent practice and the modeling, modeling on your own. Take a second if you need to, pause the video, copy down the notes. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, notice that these problems, A and C, are the same. B and D are the same. For the sake of this, because I want to do subtracting the same sign, notice here a subtraction, but then there's a positive 6 and there's a negative 3. I want to make these the same sign. And on the future worksheets, I'm pretty sure I'm already create that. But let's just make this 6 minus 3. Yours is already 6 minus 3. Don't worry about it. But let's make it 6 minus 3. All right. Now what I want to do is let me show you how to, re let's first rewrite all of these to addition problems. So when I, when I rewrite the first one, I'm going to keep negative 4, change the minus to a plus, and change that minus 3 to a positive 3. And since these two are the same, I can write that here as well. Lastly, let me do down here. Now keep positive 6, change the minus to a plus, and change that three to a negative three. Okay, once again, same over here, keep, change, change. Now we only use keep, change, change when we have subtraction of integers, okay? Now I'm gonna show you actually on the left side how to do it once again with the counters and the right side how to do it with the absolute value so we're all on the same page. First, I'm gonna draw myself four circles. These four circles are gonna be shaded in because they're representing that negative four. They're representing that negative number, and we know negative is represented by shaded circles. And I'm gonna draw myself three open circles because I'm representing a positive three. Now I'm gonna cross out all the pairs. And notice I'm left with one number, now that's just one. Now is the answer one? No, the answer is negative one. Now why is it negative one? Because we know that this closed square represents negative numbers. All right, let's do one more. Let's do down here with the counters. This is six plus negative three. So I would do six open circles and then three closed circles. Okay, this is a visual way to do it. If you feel this is easier for you, then please go about doing it like this. That's perfectly fine with me. Once you cross out the pairs, you'll notice there's only three left. And because they're open, they are positive, and that will become our answer. Now, the other side, C and D, even though they're the same problems, we know what the answer should initially be, negative 1 and 3. But I actually want to show you how to do that with the absolute value. Now, notice, are these the same sign or different signs? That's important to note once you start, especially when you're about to use absolute value. If you would have said to me just now, Mr. Whitford, these are different signs, then you were absolutely right. And I'm just going to write that here. For anyone who's watching and, and may be like, okay, well, I'm not sure what he said. These are different signs. Different signs. Negative four, positive three. Down here, also different signs. How do we know? Positive six. And I'm sorry about the way different just came out. It kind of came out scrambled together. And negative three. So let me show you how to do the absolute value. Now remember, because they're different signs, are we going to add or are we going to subtract? Now, if you said subtract, you are right. Absolute value first of each number, right? That's what the first thing says. Absolute value of each number, so absolute value of negative four is four. Absolute value of three is three. Now, do we add these or do we subtract? Because they're different signs, we are going to subtract. Is this one positive or is it negative? If you look at the original, if you look at the absolute value, which one is the bigger absolute value? Four. Four originally was negative four, so that means the answer is going to end up being negative. Let me do one more with you. Absolute value of six. 
absolute value of negative three. Because they're different signs, as we mentioned, subtraction. Now, is it gonna be positive or is it gonna be negative? Which one had the bigger absolute value? If you said six, you're absolutely right. And if you notice that the six is positive, that means our answer is going to stay positive. Take a second, pause the video if you need to, take down the notes. Now, I'm hoping that that was very helpful. If you need to rewind it, please do so. I would just remind you that we can use keep, change, change when we're subtracting integers and that we wanna make sure we identify, are they the same sign or are they different signs? If you like using counters, please do so. If you like to use absolute value, do so. So make sure you have a way that makes sense to you and works for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.